You're listening to the Orange Power Podcast, a product of Oklahoma State Athletics. Here are your hosts, Jessica Morey and the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Hunziker. With Coach Gundy as we get ready for week two of the college football season, Oklahoma State hosting Tulsa. Let's just start here. What are you looking forward to seeing in week two, perhaps in comparison to week one? Your traditional improvement, just we went out and played a game, so we should know more about what our capabilities are in all three phases. Players, we had some new players, uh, true freshmen playing more than ever, I think. And now they've been out there, their heart's beating out of their chest. They've gotten through all that. They really weren't expecting to play. So they should settle in a little bit, even though it takes a while, but at least they know that there's a chance they're going to play. And our coaches' philosophies and the way we approach the game based on what our strengths and weaknesses are in all three phases. I was thrilled with our culture and the fact that we had so many things happen late in the game. There wasn't any finger pointing. Nobody started looking down. They just went out and played the next play. We had our backs against the wall. Defense didn't say a word. They just went out and stopped them again. And so the strength of our culture and our organization helped us win that football game. So now I'm ready to see some other things take place just in the area of X's and O's with some of the younger players that didn't have any experience that will be playing in this game. You know, given the number of players who were out for the opening game and, and just the the way things have gone, it, it's been sort of a strange start to the year, hasn't it? It, it certainly has. And I, I didn't think we could replicate what, went, what happened last year with the two linemen breaking a bone in their legs and Spencer getting hurt in the first game. Um, but it's ironic, it's funny, with, with what we've gone through in the last two weeks with um, Langston Anderson being injured in pregame in, in a half-speed drill and then not being out there and Jaden Bray having to play as a freshman is unusual. Um, you know, Tay Martin being in and out with a little bit of an ankle sprain. And right. so then you put a green in, and and he's a freshman, a little bit unusual. Uh, and then, you know, we had the, the unfortunate situation with Trace Ford. We were getting ready, getting him ready to play, and, and he wasn't able to, to be there. So it, 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 it was unusual. And, you know, the interesting thing about it is we don't worry one second about it philosophy-wise because you can't do anything about it. You can only control what you can control. It drives me and us crazy for the players. Yeah. I mean, Langston Anderson's busted his tail for three weeks. You and I were just talking about it. I know. And he was ready to go and all that, and it's unfortunate. And then Trace Ford is unfortunate and so on and so forth. But um, it is a, an unusual situation. Um, so we, you know, we adapt and we overcome and um, we put the players in a position to give them the best chance to go out and play hard and play fast and, and have success. How has Spencer Sanders done in practice this week? How sharp has he been? He's been fine. Spencer's uh, looked the same as he's always looked. Um, you know, he's out of protocol and um, he's uh, practiced well this week. He was able to practice throughout the week and feels good. I saw him today and uh, seems to be doing really well. So. I'm excited about him getting out there and seeing what he can bring to the table. It was a tough game in terms of rushing the football against Missouri State. As you analyzed that, how much of that was perhaps offensive line? How much of that were maybe backs not making the right cuts, et cetera, et cetera? There was two or three times I felt like that we had more yards there from the tailback position. We could have made a different cut or extended a, a run. And then there was five or six times where we just had one guy whether it was the, the center, the guard, the tackle, the cowboy back that wasn't in the proper position to give our back the crease they needed. So you take that into account, there's eight running plays where instead of getting three or four, you could have got 15 or 20. Or if you pop out there and make the safety miss, you get 50. So then that's going to allow your rush total or your rush um, yards per carry the average to go up where it needs to be because we've talked forever it needs to be 4.5 yards per carry so if you can rush for 4.5 yards per carry then your running game is effective you might only rush 15 times I don't know 
so you can't always say, well, we need to rush for 150 yards. Well, it's unfair if you only rush for 15. So 4.5 is what we're looking for, and, and that's our goal, and then hopefully we can reach that this weekend. It's interesting to me, you have a lot of offensive linemen returning. However, when you really stop and think about it, because of all the injuries you dealt with last year, it's not like this group has played together all that much because you had somebody like Cole Birmingham that was basically out for every game in between the opener and the bowl game. So I think there's this thought that you have these guys all coming back and they've played a lot together, but that's not really true, is it? And some of that showed up <clears throat> last Saturday. Um, but that was the first time they they played together. Mm -hmm. Now, their experience, Danny's experienced as center. Um, obviously, Springfield played a ton last year. Seals has played a lot. Okay. Um, now, Maturko hasn't really played much. And Caleb, obviously, because he wasn't here. So, um, they should start to gel and play better each week. Um, but each week, your, your challenge gets better, you know, as you go through, as we know, we go through non-conference and then conference, you know, it gets tougher. So, uh, I think they're going to be fine. I think they're coming together and they should start to work a little bit better each week. Was there any position defensively that stood out to you that you thought really played well against Missouri State? The linebackers played really good. Uh, Malcolm was fabulous and Devin Harper for his first start where he played an extended number of plays played really good um, the safeties played well um, our corners played good not great and up front we had a good pass rush so overall the defense as you know played very well this will be a different test for them and each week it'll get tougher Tulsa obviously coming off a loss to an FCS team UC Davis, of course, is one of those things where if everything goes against you or you have the, the wrong mistakes at the wrong time, those can be very costly. That's what appeared to have happened in the game in the opener. But defensively, they lost some really good players, including Zayvon Collins, National Player of the Year defensively. Has that altered anything for them philosophically, given that the guys they lost were really good players? Their schemes and their philosophy is the same, in my opinion. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to miss him, uh, you know, at the backer spot. He made a lot of football plays. Um, we haven't seen enough of their corners to know where they're at yet. The two guys that they had there last year we thought were good football players. And they've got a number of guys back in their defensive front. They play with big guys up there, 6'1-ish, mm -hmm. um, 290. And they push hard. They push linemen back. And they've got a, f a few super seniors that are playing over there that have a lot of experience. Uh, but their philosophies and, and schemes are the same as what they have been. It's interesting. On offense, a bunch of experience in the offensive line, a lot of experience at the skill positions, but a new quarterback. Yes. And, um, you know, they felt like, just in what you read, that, that he could have played better last week, um, just in the quotes that I see. He didn't have a lot of experience last year. So he came Very in late. Limited. Came in late. So to a certain extent, he's just feeling his way through it. Uh, but the games that I saw and what I've seen was uh, I liked him as an operator. Uh, I liked his ability to, to get the ball out. He throws it around pretty good. Uh, and he maneuvers around pretty good. Uh, I, I would say that as he progresses – and gets his reps and gets his quality time that he's going to continue to get to be become a pretty good football player. Game day in this case is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about 9-11, and what do you remember about the trip to Texas A&M, which was the next game following? So we were in a meeting. Um, I was an assistant back then. Coach Miles was the head coach, and we were in a meeting, and somebody had come in and stuck their head in the meeting and said, uh, a building got blown up in New York City. And so we thought, well, that's odd. Because at that time, we didn't really have terrorism. Right. Right. Unfortunately, now we see terrorism all the time, all over the world. But we didn't see much of it then. So nobody really understood or knew what was going on. Then somebody came in and said, another building. And then, before you know it, we had it turned on in the staff room on the TV, and then the buildings collapsed. And so it was the first time in my life where 
I had ever seen terrorism and then felt, uh, had a hole in my stomach like, I can't believe this is happening in this country. And I just didn't understand. I mean, I just, how could that happen? Of course, none of us knew. Yeah. We didn't know that, at first we thought a plane just got off, off track. We sure. didn't know it was terrorism. Sure. And then we started to figure it out. And from that point forward, as we all know, it changed the everyday activity and operation of every human in the world from going through airports to securities to just the way we live our life. Then we practiced, we actually practiced that day. Some schools didn't practice. And then from that point on, it was debatable across the country. Do we play your games? Do you not play your games? Do you practice? Do you not practice? Nobody knew what to do because we all had feelings for the people involved. So we didn't know what to do. And we ended up playing that week, and there was fear of terrorism in the stadium. Yeah, because you sat out that week against Northern Arizona, and then A&M, I guess, was about a, about a yeah, week, yeah. week and a half later, whatever it was, yeah. Yeah, so week and a half later, and then we go play at A&M. And so there was concern. Yeah, there was, there was talk about – you know, would there potentially, could there potentially be terrorism in the stadium? Wow. So it was just unusual for everybody. And as we know, it's changed everything since then. That's Coach Gundy. When we return, Jessica Morey has a conversation with Tay Martin. Stick around. It's time for Ask the Coach, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, Coach Gundy. My name is Blair, and I have a question for you. Is it more challenging keeping the team focused when things are going well or picking them up when things are not going as well? Both. I think that in my 17 years that I would say that as a head coach, uh, managing the overall attitude and feel of uh, 175 people being the players and the staff and everybody in the building, um, if things aren't going good, um, have to find a way to get people back on track. And if we're doing really good, we have to keep them grounded. So that challenge is somewhat equal. At OGND, the energy we deliver is more than electrical. We energize education by supporting schools to help our children reach their potential. So every time you see Big Orange out there working for you, remember we're also working to turn power into empowerment. Because at OGND, we do more than energize a power grid. At OGND, we energize life. Hello, sweet babies. Welcome to your new home. You have changed our life, and you may even change the world. And because of you, 2021 is the best year ever. Mercy has helped moms deliver babies for nearly 200 years. To find out how to welcome your baby at Mercy, visit mercy.net slash OSU mom. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. The giant blue whale in central Oklahoma. Musicians in search of that perfect melody. You'll even discover the center of the universe. You'll find stories of lives led, challenges met, and men who raise pigeons. They're all out there waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is follow the road. Phillips 66, live to the full. Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. Welcome back to the Orange Power Podcast. I'm Jessica Mori, and our guest this week is senior wide receiver Tay Martin. Tay, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. All right, so you're coming off of your first start here at Oklahoma State, and you had a great game. How were you able to have so much success? What was that like to just getting that first start out of the way here? It was great. Honestly, my first experience, real experience in Boone Picking Stadium was was a blast. My my teammates did a tremendous job. 
of you know just going out there and taking care of of you know the job at at, at hand and uh, we did good we went out there and handled business so it was it was fun to go out there finally and have a full full capacity crowd and make some plays what was it like when you caught that touchdown Man, it, it, it it's kind of like one of those things. Like I I done it a few times over my career, so kind of like got different experiences. But but that was that one right there was one to remember for sure because it was my first touchdown at, at as a cowboy in, in Boone Picking Stadium. So that one was 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 very was very you know emotional for me. Just for my, my little girl to be there and experience that with me was also you know a tremendous thing. So I was just happy, honestly. How would how does that start on Saturday compare to your first start at Washington State? Uh, my my first start at Washington State, I was a freshman, so I was still like figuring out the whole college thing and and just just playing off of raw talent, honestly. But but just doing it at at this age and and this mindset was 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 different because I had more knowledge and I knew what what it takes to to get the job done and I knew what I had to do to you know perform at at the best you know, that I could, and that was to practice well and, and have good preparation. And I just felt more confident out there, you know, being older and, and more experienced. And you had talked about when you transferred here initially, you know, the Pac-12, you know, last year the Pac-12 was talking about not having a football season because of COVID. Um, you had considered going to the NFL and then decided to come here, you know, to be co closer to your family and mm -hmm. to play another year. Um, you got two years because of COVID. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you kind of think about that, like, do you would if you had to do it all over again? Would this be the decision you made? Yeah, mo most definitely, cause cause I feel like um, the sky's the limit for me, and, and 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 you know what what I what I got ahead of me. So I knew that if I stayed down and stayed the course, that more doors would open up. So I just want to you know keep my head down, keep pushing, and not settle for 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 less. I wanted to wanted to get more and and get game get more attention, get more attention, and make sure like. Everybody knew who, who I was as a player and a person. How tough was last year for you? You know, you're behind guys like Tylen Wallace, mm -hmm. um, but it obviously was just a tough year in general. But how right. how hard was last year for you? I mean, it was it was hard not being able to to um, play as much as I wanted, but but also it was an experience that I, I won't forget ever. You know, being being in that room with guys like. Dylan Stoner, Tylen Wallace, like D. Anderson, LSU transfer, just being around different guys like that just just gave me experience I need to like be able to adapt and in, in a room full of talent like that and, and just soak everything from different guys and, and be able to like give, you know, different different things to other guys. So just just having that experience was great for me, honestly. It it helped me and and I and I just used that as, you know, a tool, honestly. And we've talked, um, you know, before the season started about off-season talks with Coach Gundy, mm -hmm. and that has helped you as you went into fall camp and into this season. Talk to me about that. What were those talks like, and, and mm -hmm. why was it important for you to build that relationship with him? Uh, it, it's important. It was important for me to build that relation, relationship because uh, I just like I just like to get to know my head coach because it, it, it motivates me to play harder and, and for me to know who I play for, and, and it drives me to – so you know, get the do get the job done, you know, more. But just it was the the talks we had was was more like family talks, like stuff about my daughter and, and his kids, and just life talks in general to make me a better man and a better person in life. So just just having them talks with him honestly just motivate me to be a better father in general and just a better person overall. So those 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 talks was key, and um, it kept me going. How did those talks come to be? Did you approach him or did he mm -hmm. approach you? Uh, it was kind of it was kind of both hand in hand. Like we we would always see each other in the weight room. He was always coming in there during winter workouts and stuff like that. And he'll talk to me and I'll talk to him and and it kind of clicked from then on. And we always had conversations. And I always I always would just go up to his office and just talk. So it was it was one of those things where we just kind of had that you know that relationship where it was mutual respect kind of you know. That's awesome. Yeah. Is there like a certain piece of advice or anything that he's given you, um, you know, dad advice mm -hmm. or football advice that that's gonna stick with you? Yeah, um, some dad advice he would always give me. He would just like um, he would say like, um, "What would your daughter think about this?" So, anytime you 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 know you you thinking about quitting or or just just giving up on a, on a day or you tired, just just what would you what would your daughter think about this? You know, so just just him giving giving me that little advice just 
you know, it plays over over and over in my head about, you know, my daughter because that's my why. That's one of my whys. And so I always cherish that, and, and it helped me get motivated for sure. And talking about your daughter, Rain, is mm-hmm. she two now? How old is she? Yeah, she's two. She's two. She turned two in February. <laughs> It don't seem like she's too. She's moving a little too fast for me right now, but but it's all good. She's 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 gorgeous. My my wife, my everything. So, and sure. um, you know, today we got a little bit of a late start on mm. the podcast because you were dealing with dad life. You had class, yeah. so you had your student life, right? And then you had dad life, and right. now you have student athlete life. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you were saying you had to pick up some medicine because yeah, she's her, her teething. Teeth, yeah. How are you? How do you just balance all of that? I mean. You kind of, um, I wouldn't say you get used to it, but you kind of figure out how to multitask better. Like being in a, being in the multiple football programs or football in general, like kind of like helped me like be able to deal with the different tasks we deal with. So it, that kind of helped me honestly with my daughter. I know how to balance it more and. And yeah, she was teething pretty bad. She was yelling, screaming at me. I'm, t- I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with that part, but. <laughs> Other than that, I'm I'm really dealing with it well, so I enjoy it. I enjoy it. If any of our listeners have teething advice, feel free to send it to Tay. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she kept me up all night, kind of. I mean, <laughs> it was all good. Is it just? Do you ever kind of sit back and just realize how much you really are balancing? I mean, you've got practice, you're preparing for the first start, and you've got your daughter here, who, right. um, you know, she doesn't know what's happening she yeah, doesn't know yeah. you have all this stuff right. going on um so do you ever kind of sit back and be like wow I'm really like I'm really taking care of my business yeah I mean I don't, I don't really sit back and say because uh every day is is a different task and every day I I, I get better as a man and, and a father so I just keep it going I try to stack the days as I can and, and become a better father become a better football player and hopefully you know everything works out the way it's supposed to well, you think uh, she's going to be a little athlete? You think she's going to play some sports? Yeah, most definitely. She's she's already getting a little tall, and I I can tell she's going to be athletic. She she likes to dance right now, but but I'm I'm letting her dance, getting her foot <laughs> foot and eye coordination right, and we'll translate that to basketball soon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what was it like just knowing that, you know, last year she got to come watch some games um, mm-hmm. and see you play, but this year now you are the guy, you are starting yeah. these games, you're, you know, right. one of the top receivers, if not the top. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how, how much more special is that knowing that, you know, you made the choice to come here to be closer to her so she can watch you, and now right. she is watching yeah. you actually succeed. That. Yeah, that, that, that meant the most to me, honestly, just having her in the stands, Watching me score some touchdowns, making them plays, it, it meant the most to me. Cause I honestly asked her, I was like, "Did you see Daddy score?" She's like, "Yeah, I see, I see you score." So for her to like honestly like reply to me and and, and remember that is it, it meant the most to me. It, it kind of got me emotional, but yeah, that's my why. So I'm gonna keep pushing for her, and and hopefully I get many more. Yeah, and she knows. I was up there um, in the stands with her last year, mm-hmm. um, you know, and she was younger then, but yeah. she knew. She she yeah. was like, there's daddy. Like, she right, could point. Right. She knew you were there. Yeah, so, so it was mind-blowing to me. So yeah. just experiencing that, it, it, it pushes me, honestly. And that I'm, is I'm so grateful. cool. I'm grateful, yeah. Yeah, that is awesome. She was super sweet, and she loved the camera. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. they get some <laughs> photos of her, and she just. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> she loves the camera. <laughs> Um, so we'll kind of change topics a little bit here and go into not only were you dealing with preparing for the first start, but you were dealing mm-hmm. with Hurricane Ida, right. um, you know, hitting your hometown of Homa, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Were you living in Louisiana when Katrina hit as well? Yeah, I was. I was living in, um, in Homa, Louisiana then, and me and my family actually evacuated then to Houston for, um, for, for Hurricane Katrina. But it it didn't um it didn't hit it didn't impact us as we thought it was but it it it, tr- it truly impacted um New Orleans as, as we all know but but yeah de- so I have I have a lot of memories just dealing with a lot of hurricanes like us packing up and just leaving so yeah we we deal with it a lot but um we, we're for, we're for sure relentless and 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 know how to push through and and always stay together through those tough times. What was going through your mind when Hurricane Ida was? coming in and they were predicting that it was mm. going to hit um, New Orleans and then going to hit Homa. What, what was kind of going through? Because you're here. Right. You can't be there. You you can't be there to help them pack up or help them evacuate. Right. And you can only do so much. What was that like? I was just trying to get to my phone as quick as I can and, and call and communicate with every, everybody I could, every family member I, I could at the time and made sure like they knew about it, made sure they was aware of how, how dangerous this hurricane was. And, 
and and you, as I knew that they was gonna be aware, but I was making sure they was gonna be able to leave and and actually evacuate and take this serious because we all know like some some of them don't want to leave home. Like my grandmother, she she didn't even leave home; she stayed. So like sometimes sometimes like they just don't want to leave home and want to board up their houses. So it's, it's one of those tough things. So I made sure like. Most of my family was safe and made sure she was good. Every day I checked on her. So just knowing that they was okay kind of gave me that, that safe, that safe haven in the back of my mind. And and I was able to go out there and perform with it. And and was your grandmother, is her house okay? Yeah, it, it's okay. It had a lot of, um, a lot of flood damage, but she, she didn't, um, she didn't stay at her house. She actually went, she went with some family members and they boarded up some, some, you know, they boarded up the windows. They, they treat it like yeah. <laughs> uh, Poculus or something. <laughs> <laughs> and your house, you had mentioned, it had some damage. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, the roof flew off, and yeah, that that was it was a tough deal, but but we, we're sure gonna get through it and gonna figure out everything right now. Like they they still don't have electricity in in my city right now, so we still figuring that out. And, and just how hard is it knowing that you can't? You, I mean, you just can't be there to help. I mean, that's got to be tough. Yeah, it's really hard, but but my family, my family know what I'm what I'm doing, and they know the stuff I have to to prepare for, and so they they always, you know, just continue to push me, tell me to go harder. Don't worry about us; we'll be fine. We're, we're safe. So, were they able to watch? You said they went to Houston. Were they able to watch uh, the game in Houston? Yeah, they they watched me play. I got a lot of texts and. You know, good game from them. So that was that was great. That was a great deal. It got it got them. You know, something to look forward to as far as other than the hurricane. They was able to get that off their mind and watch me go out there and have fun. And I'm sure it made them happy as well. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like definitely a great distraction mm -hmm. from everything yeah. um, that was going on. So now we'll talk a little bit about um, coming up on the 2nd of October against Baylor. That's mm -hmm. our mental health awareness game. Um, that it will be the game theme focusing on how important mental health awareness is. What does mental health mean to you? Uh, mental health means to me, honestly, everything, because I've dealt with, well, like many people know, I've dealt with that in the past of one of my friends, you know, he, he dealt with mental mental health issues and, and it's it's one thing. It's like a thing like you you would never know unless you really be there for that person. And it taught me a lot. That's one thing. It just taught me to really make sure your teammate, no matter who it is, a friend, no matter no matter who the person is, to make sure they're okay and just ask questions. So that's what men mental health means to me. Just being being there for a person and make sure their well being well being is is okay and, and they got a clear head. So. And just raising awareness for people to make sure, you know, there are people to talk to. Like, you right. don't have to, there's right. the stigma, trying to get rid of the stigma mm -hmm. and normalize, hey, everyone needs somebody to talk to. Everyone yeah. needs that. Sure. Do you feel like you kind of encourage the guys here, just encourage people in your life to to be open about stuff? Yeah, most most definitely. I, I have a mentor myself, so I couldn't, I couldn't deal with those many things I have without talking to someone or without, like, being able to say, hey, I'm dealing with this, man, what you think about this? Like, it's important for have that it's important to have that person to talk to to get anything off your chest because you don't want you don't want all them things to just boil up in your head and 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 you know for you to just get you know get annoyed with everything. So you gotta you always gotta have a mentor who be there for you and make sure you keep that that clear conscience for sure. Yeah, and that's awesome that you mm -hmm. have someone like that in your life. And right. um, you know, you dealt with a lot at Washington State. You've dealt with a lot in your life in general. All I mean, right. it, some of the obstacles you've had to overcome. And your mom passed away when you were in high school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having to ha having to help your sisters right. um, and raise them, and then you know, with with Tyler Holinsky at mm -hmm. Washington State, and then Bryce Beekman right. passing away. I mean, you've just had to. I mean, it's crazy how much stuff you've had to overcome, and you're still here, standing strong, and and dealing with that, and you know, um, being able to handle all that is extremely impressive. Um, you know, when you you said last year when we we did a story about your life, mm -hmm. um, you know, you said whenever you take the field, you talk to Bryce and you right. talk to Tyler right. you, and you talk to your mom. Do you still yeah. do that? Yeah, most definitely. I talk to all of them because I I need I need them, and 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 I know, you know, what I mean, I know how they feel about me. I know. I know they would they want me to play through them and want me to just you know just yeah it's tough but 
They just, they just, they just would want me to do good and and be the best that I I can be as a person, man, player, whatever it is. So I, I make sure I, I get that conversation to them before I I step on that field for sure. When you caught that touchdown against Missouri State, you know you did it for your daughter Rain. Mm-hmm. You know you got to say, you know you did it for her. But did you feel like that? You know that Tyler and Bryce and everyone were just. Did you feel them kind of with you when you yeah, caught that? Yeah, most definitely. When, my, when I do my, um, I did a little touchdown celebration. I like put the phone in my ear and I, you know, I call. Yeah, you know I saw mean? that. I wondered about that. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really calling them, like whatever. I love that. You know I mean, yeah. So I, I'm gonna do that every time I score. I'm gonna make sure I call them and make sure they, they respect. You know I mean, what I'm doing for them and and yeah, I'm playing through them. Oh, that's through. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then. You know, you kind of talked about life. What after you know post football career? Uh, you know, what kind of stuff do you want to get into? Uh, multiple things. I honestly want to get into real estate. Yeah, that's smart. Want to get into real estate? Uh, there's a lot of things out there. I wanna I wanna be on podcasts like this soon. Soon. Hey, you got your start here. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get a little. I gotta get a little more comfortable. But I you're doing great. Though, you're doing so. great. <laughs> yeah, I want to get into podcasts. Just. You know, just some things I can just sit on my butt and just make some money off, honestly. <laughs> I hey. want to work after this. I'm yeah. Done. My body will be done, so. Yeah. If you find more of those things, send it my way. I also would like to, <laughs> <For> to, <sure. laughs> to, sure. to sit and not do, don't do we, things. Don't we all. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you feel like you'd ever get into coaching or anything like that? Um, Yeah, I mean, it's possible. It's for sure possible, but I don't know. Like, I've been around the game all my life, so it just... Depends if I want to stay in the game and just talk more X and O's. Yeah. Because it's tough. That's the tough part about it. Like, mentally, like, you got to talk about a lot of X and O's just, and uh, the game plans and all that. So, I, yeah. I just don't know. I feel like you'd be good at, like, um, but, you know, a player personnel type role or something yeah. like that where you're dealing with the guys mm-hmm. directly on more of, like, a personal level and, sure. um, you know, talking to them about life and sure. stuff. I feel like you'd be really good at that. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah. To honestly be able to, like, you know – Share my experiences with my players. That would be a good, that would be a great deal. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. Cause mm-hmm. yeah, then you're not necessarily coaching, but right. you're still coaching them in like life. Right, right. Cause yeah, you've had a ton of experiences that I think mm-hmm. people you know could easily learn from and stuff sure. like that. So, um, but that's a long way away. You have yeah. this, you know hopefully a su- very successful <laughs> professional career ahead of you. Yeah. Um, whenever you were thinking about coming back here mm-hmm. for the COVID year, um, like this current year, did was did it ever question like thinking about leaving or were you always pretty much set on hey I know next year is going to be my year 2021 is going to be my year yeah that, that that was that was always the plan in my head you know I stayed down that year for a reason so I wasn't gonna you know just leave and try to start over again so I was always in my head I was always wanting to come back and take advantage of this year well we're glad you did yeah me, <laughs> me too <laughs> We are very glad you did. I know I was I was so excited to to see you out there and watching you mm. during the spring and everything. I was like, this is going to be a big, you know, it's going to be a big year, and you guys got to watch out for Tay because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be a problem for defenses for sure. So, well, thank you so much for joining me yeah. on Thanks the podcast. Me. We can't wait me. to see you uh, the rest of this season and continue to cheer you on and um, send the teething tips in for rain <laughs> if you have them. Yo, send, them to, <laughs> send them to Tay. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this week's Orange Power Podcast. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you next week.